All right, there's a question that was posed um, on our forum uh, a few weeks ago. And um, so the question was, is it possible to get an iPhone out of recovery mode or DFU mode um, and get the data off? And so I'm going to kind of show you here um, that it is indeed possible. And um, so first off, there's two different variations of um, putting your phone into some sort of recovery mode. Okay, so from what I've read, there's DFU mode where um, DFU mode doesn't load the bootloader and the screen is completely black. All right, but iTunes recognizes it and says that your iPhone's in reco in recovery mode. Okay, and then there's there's actually there's actual recovery mode where you know you hold the home and power button and for a certain period of time and then you release the power button and continue holding the home button and when you're in recovery mode you'll you'll see an icon uh, iTunes logo with a uh, cord attached to it okay so that's recovery mode recovery mode loads the bootloader and from what I understand it's meant for the general consumer and DFU mode is is meant for um, technicians um, there's not a whole lot of information aside from from that okay uh, and the only real indication is that both 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 modes are going to show in iTunes that you're in recovery mode one has a black screen and one has an iTunes screen with a cable attached to it okay so I'm going to show you how to get an iPhone out of DFU mode um, so that you can get access to the data and and this is only going to apply to certain instances, okay, and in in this instance, um, I'm gonna give you a little history of this phone, okay. So this this phone right here was super smashed. I don't even know what happened to it, but as you can see, this is the back, this is the original back glass right here, and, and this is the front glass. So I imagine that somebody threw it on the ground or something got run over by a car or something like that, okay. Um, so what I ended up doing was just putting putting taking his logic board out, putting it into our frame here, and um, and and one that I know that works okay and so what I'm gonna do is um, first thing I always do is I'll just I just put it put into an ammeter uh, and when I say ammeter um, this is what I mean I'm gonna see if I can show you guys and guys that have been watching my video for a long time you'll see that you'll know what I'm talking about but so this is an ammeter here okay and, and basically it, it's a USB device connects to the end of your USB and it, and uh, this is the output voltage right here and this is the output current okay so when I plug this in it's gonna tell me um, how much current the device is consuming um, which ultimately tells me um, you know whether the device is powering on or not because the sequence for a device that's powering on is almost al almost always very very similar okay meaning like you know start start at zero and then once you plug it in it'll go up to around one amp you know if it's an iPhone 8 then it goes up to two amp if it's an iPad it'll go up about two amps and then um, um, and it also depends on the, the power brick you know if your power brick only goes up to one amp then it's only gonna pull one amp so so alright so I have this iPhone here that is is plugged in. I'm gonna plug it in, and you'll see on the ammeter that it it's just a constant 0.43 amps. Okay, and a lot of times you'll you can feel around and things get hot. Okay, and in this case the CPU gets pretty hot. Okay, and sometimes it jumps around. You can see it gets really hot. So I'm actually gonna unplug this right now uh, because I don't want anything to burn out. Um, so that's pretty standard for a phone that has some sort of short in it okay um, and um, yeah sometimes it'll go to it'll be stuck at 0.43 sometimes it'll go back to zero and then just kind of keep looping like that okay um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this sucker into iTunes alright so I'm gonna plug this I'm gonna plug the battery back in and I'm, I'm, I'm only gonna do this brief briefly because I don't wanna do any more damage to this phone than it already has. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna plug the battery in and plug this phone in. Okay, as you can see, the screen is completely black. I don't even know if it works or not, but I know that when I plug my um, <coughs> when I plug my good screen in there. Um, okay, so as you can see, it says iTunes has detected 
an iPhone in recovery mode. You must restore this iPhone before it can be used in iTunes. Okay. So this phone right here is black. There's no icon. There's no symbol on it. Um, and it's stuck in recovery mode. It's an iPhone 8 Plus. Okay. So I'm going to pull this out because this thing is, the CPU gets hot and I really don't want to do any more damage to it. Okay. So as you can see, it's stuck in recovery mode. So now I'm going to show you how to get it out of the recovery mode and uh, recover your data. And I've already done the troubleshooting on this thing, so <clears throat> I know exactly what's wrong with it. And um, I just wanted to prove a point that it is indeed possible to get a phone out of DFE mode um, and save data. Okay, so in this instance right here, <clears throat> um, let me see if I can bring up a few things to show you guys what's going on here, okay? So, when you're doing data recovery, um, the steps I always take is, I just showed you the, the first few steps, which was plugging an ammeter, and then what I normally do is, I don't know if everybody does the same kind of stuff, but I, I normally probe the most important, um, you know, the systems that fail the most, okay, and the systems that fail the most are um, the backlight system, the display system, um, then you have like a, the, the, the main power lines and for, so for the main power lines it's either going to be VCC main or VDD main based, uh, you know depending on what version of the iPhone logic board it is so I'll probe that in diode mode and see if it's shorted or not and then I'll probe some of the main um, power lines and those main power lines include um, PP1V8 which is a 1.8 volt power line PP3V0 um, and then a bunch of its sublines, okay? Um, so backlight system, display system, VCC or VDD main, uh, PP1V8, um, and then PP3V0, okay? So in this case, I know that one of the common faults is the, one of the NAND power lines, especially after a drop. For some reason, these capacitors just kind of blow up. And so in this case, you know, as I was doing my normal checks, I, I discovered that this um, this power line here was shorted. All right. So if you look at my multimeter here, hmm. <clears throat> I'll see if I can get my multimeter up so that you guys can see it. Okay. So this is my multimeter. It's a dusty UT UT 139C. You don't really need a fancy one. You don't need a fluke or anything like that. Although I'm sure it's better. But so what I do is you can kind of barely see my logic board here, but I'll try to put it in a way that you guys can kind of see it a little bit better. But what I do is, you know, I just diode mode this um, all these power lines, and you'll see that both sides are at zero, which means that this line is this power line is shorted. Okay, and I'm going to show you in ZXW tools what it looks like if I can get it up. Uh, what's this? Okay, so this is the XW tools, um, and let me see if I can get it so that I should have been prepared a little bit better, but uh, whatever. Okay, so looking at the XW tools, um, this is actually kind of reversed. I normally like to have the B side on the bottom. Um, okay, so iPhone 8 Plus. And this is going to be the back side of the logic board near the NAND chip, and it's going to be this component right here. Okay, so if you can, if you see, it's a PP3V0 main. So this is one of the main power lines, and this is something that commonly gets shorted. Okay, so if you look at all the red um, points, these are all the components that are connected on this PP3V0 NAND um, line. And the way I work is once I find a shorted line. I uh, always start with the bigger capacitors because the bigger capacitors are the ones that blow the most often. Okay, so um, one way that you can do it if there's a ton of components is to use free spray. Okay, um, so I normally only use free spray if there's if there's a short on VCC main or VDD main. Um, for for this right here, I normally just start popping off the capacitors. Okay, so in this case, 
if you look at all the red connected um, capacitors, you'll see, and you always start with capacitors because capacitors are the ones that fail the most. Um, so if you look at all the capacitors here, um, there's one, two, three, four big capacitors. So you start with those. You just essentially just start popping them off. You know, um, you can use a little bit of heat, or you can just use your tweezers, some some pretty sturdy tweezers, and start popping them off. So in, in this case, so in this case, you can see here that. Let me move my multimeter here. You can see here that um, I just I pop this off, pop this off, pop this off, and then this is the one that's actually shorted. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this short right here. And one thing that you can do is um, you can um, diode mode. So you can diode mode this. Um, you can download this uh, the pads on the logic board. Okay, so one side is going to be grounded, and the other side is 0.348. So we know that the the short is relieved. Now to confirm that the, that capacitor was actually shorted, you can actually um, check continuity across this. And um, a capacitor is not supposed to show continuity across it. If it shows continuity across it, that means it's bad. So I know that this one's bad. So this one's shorted. Okay, so. The short has been relieved, and now we're going to um, put this back in our housing and test it again to see if the data is still on there. So I'm going to use a, a known good screen and I'm going to go ahead and plug this in again. And the Apple logo goes up. And people ask me what this red thing is and basically it's a it's a it's a screen cleaner and um, just click on if you so basically all the equipment that I use you can just go into the description of every video that I have and you'll uh, just click on some of those links and you'll you'll come across all of the equipment that I use okay I get asked all the time what equipment that I use and so I just stuck it in a link and and then if you ever have any questions I'm not answering any more questions on on uh, YouTube um, you'll have to go to the to our free forum on microsolder.com and I will answer every single question that you have on there okay so as you can see that the, the data is on here um, so this is the data for this phone um, so to answer the question of whether it's possible to save da data on a phone that's stuck in DFU mode, um, the answer is yes. Um, now, in terms of recover, in terms of recovery mode, where you see the actual icon, I don't think I've ever been successful recovering data um, that way before. Okay, so I think one thing, I mean, I. I I'm hesitant to say that it's impossible, um, but usually when you see recovery mode, that you can't get out of recovery mode, it means that a software update has already been attempted on it, or software restore has already been attempted on it, okay? Um, so if that ever changes, then um, I'll post a video on it, but at this point, I would say DFU mode, black screen, iTunes recognizes it, is date is data recoverable? Yes. iTunes screen with a charging cable. Um, iTunes recognizes it in recovery mode. Is data recover uh, recoverable? No. Not right now at least. Okay. And I don't know maybe somebody has a video out there already that um, allows this but that proves this but I'm not really sure. Um, so I hope this helps um, and if you need or services or want to learn how to do this then we have a online micro soldering course it's uh, priced at a hundred bucks right now just go through their website click on the links and you'll get um, 50 bucks off of our retail price of 150 bucks and I'm also gonna have a little video after this video um, if you wanna if you wanna learn how to do that questions just go to our micro soldering free micro soldering forum um, equipment just click on the links and it, uh, you'll see links to mainly to Amazon and we sell some stuff on our website as well
to buy some of this equipment. So, um, all right. So this video is done. Thanks for watching. So I just wanted to say thank you for watching this channel, and I wanted to promote our online micro soldering course. Um, we have it hosted at udemy.com, and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction. Um, the reviews are pretty good, um, and we talk about everything from the basics uh, of, of an iPhone logic board, um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools. Um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station, your micro soldering um, station, and how to use diode mode. Uh, the third part is the three most common repairs, which is no touch, no backlight, no charge. And the fourth part is all about data recovery. So, um, if you go through our website, it's a hundred bucks. And some people say that learning online is not the best way of doing things, or you can't learn micro soldering online. I beg to differ. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago and that's how I learned it um, and not only that but you know you go to a live course some people like live courses but not everybody has three thousand dollars to spend on a live course right so um, and then yes you're right you can go to YouTube and watch all these videos um, but you're not gonna when people make these videos they don't go from A to Z they usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watch something earlier on or one of their earlier videos so this course is all-encompassing it has everything from A to Z um, to help you get started in micro soldering and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly maybe monthly basis and we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding to this thing and um, so if you want to get started just I mean you could also take a class but uh, you know to get your feet wet I think this is the best thing to do right here and I vouch for it. Um, thanks for watching the video. I was also going to say, um, in order to buy it with a discount, $50 discount, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then it's going to be the first item on here. You click on buy at Udemy, and that'll give you the $50 off. Thanks.